Dozens of people were evacuated from their homes after a, t a fire tore through an apartment building in Hermitage. Let's get the latest from Cuthbert Langley. He's been out there for us all morning gathering information. And Cuthbert, how many units were damaged? Good morning, Amy. At this point, what we know is that one unit was totally destroyed and then several others either had smoke or flame damage after that fire this morning. Right now, some cleanup crews are out here on the scene. Let me show you what it looks like right here. Obviously, as it gets brighter, we're getting a better idea of just how bad the damage is. You can see as we start off on the balcony there, pretty much unrecognizable. And as we go up to the roof there, you can see huge hole in there. It looks like the fire literally melted off the roof to this apartment. Thankfully, though, it did not get much worse because just look at this video a viewer sent us earlier this morning. You can see how large the flames were, how high the smoke was. Fire officials tell me it took them between 30 and 45 minutes to put out the fire this morning. We do know that one woman who lived in the apartment that is completely destroyed this morning did have a burn, but she was checked out on the scene and will be OK. Unfortunately, though, a cat did die in that fire. Now, the district fire chief tells me the style of attack firefighters used on these flames saved many more apartments. Fire crews made an aggressive attack and were able to stop it at the uh, at the breezeway of this first apartment here. Again, the fire investigator, we are told, will be out here at some point this morning to continue to figure out exactly what caused this fire. We have not seen him yet. The Red Cross, though, left here within the last hour or so. And again, the cleanup effort now begins this morning. We'll continue to closely follow any updates as we get them throughout the morning and put those on NewsChannel5.com. For now, though, we're live here in Hermitage. I'm Cuthbert Langley, News Channel 5 HD. All right, Cuthbert, thank you. Half of a family's home was destroyed by flames in Rutherford County. Now take a look at the video sent to us from a viewer there in the Rocky Fork Road area of Smyrna. Luckily, everyone made it out all right. Boy, what a fire though. Fire crews did say part of the home for cars were destroyed. They're still looking into how the blaze actually began. An apartment complex under construction. They're cleaning up now after a fire did some damage. A driver along I-65 spotted the flames across on Carruthers Parkway early yesterday morning and called 911. The Franklin Park apartments were about 75% finished. Several units do have a lot of damage, though. No one was hurt. No word how that blaze actually began. A little bit later today, the future of the Two Rivers Fire Department could be decided, according to the Ashland City Times. The department's facing a lack of volunteers, so the board of directors is scheduled to meet tonight at 530 at the Two Rivers station. If they do decide to close the station, the city will not be without emergency service. Officials have been working out a plan to make sure that the area is covered. New this morning for you, two men were injured after a stabbing at a McDonald's in South Nashville. It's along Nolansville Pike. Police are still interviewing the witnesses to find out what happened. Those victims had cuts on their bodies. They should be all right. No word yet who might be a suspect. A woman went to the hospital after being shot in the hand last night along Robertson Street in the J.C. Napier community. We're told she's expected to be all right. No word yet what led up to that shooting or if there are any suspects. Well, we have some new information this morning concerning that deadly wreck in Ashland City. We've learned that the fire truck was returning from a call when it was involved in a crash. It happened on Highway 249 yesterday. The Cheatham County Sheriff's Office says the vehicle was trying to pass a tractor trailer when it happened. Two first responders were hurt and a passenger in the car was killed. The crash is under investigation by the Tennessee Highway Patrol. And one person is dead after a bad crash involving a fire truck. We're told the Ashland City fire truck was trying to pass a big rig on Sam's Creek Road yesterday when it slammed into a car head on. The passenger again was killed. Their name hasn't been released and the first responders, two of them, were hurt. Two young children had to be sent to the hospital after being hit by a car while they were playing. But the key is they were playing inside a box. Happened Sunday morning in Clarksville along Turner Lane near Gale Drive. Those kids were in this large cardboard box right there that was sitting along the side of Turner Lane. Well, investigators say a car hit the box. The children had to be flown to Vanderbilt. The little boy should be all right. The little girl's condition is a little more serious, though. There's a lot of blame to go around, but I don't believe that the driver was without blame. Um, I'm not, I'm a little bit upset, but I don't blame him solely. The driver that hit that box did not stop. Police later found that person and questioned them. 
Police say they had no idea that kids were actually inside the box. The investigation into that accident continues. A new development also in the case of a two-year-old boy that fell into a cheetah pit at the zoo in Cleveland, Ohio. Authorities say his parents may be to blame. Zoo officials say it appears the kid's mom was, get this, dangling the toddler over the protective railing when he slipped and fell into the cheetah pit 12 feet below. Luckily, the cheetahs never approached the family of the child. The boy did receive some leg injuries. Cleveland Metro Park System said it wants child endangerment charges filed against that mom. Well, some developing news this morning out of Manchester. Nearly 100 dogs and cats had to be rescued from a hoarding situation over the weekend. Dogs and cats were found in terrible conditions. Authorities report dangerous levels of ammonia with crates rusted shut and surrounded by trash. Animal Rescue Corps was called in to help the animals and they've dubbed, dubbed the mission Operation Midnight Run. The animals will each be checked by a vet and cared for by Animal Corps before being placed for adoption. Right now, no word on charges against the owner, but we're going to continue to monitor this situation and let you know details as they become available. All right, this is a better animal story here. Look at these cuties. Two tiny black bear cubs were rescued and taken to the Appalachian Bear Rescue in East Tennessee. Each bear only weighs about four pounds. They were found on the side of a road in North Carolina. The two little cubs named Bonnie Blue and Ridgeway will be nursed back to health and then released back into the wild. Very cute. A South Nashville woman is in critical condition this morning after being attacked by a pit bull over the weekend. It happened Saturday night on Lewis Street. The woman's injury is so severe she had to be taken to Vanderbilt. People who live in the area say violent stray dogs have been a problem in their neighborhood and they're not surprised someone was seriously hurt. My heart goes out to them, and I believe the charges need to be brought up on the owner. And I personally believe that they need to have the animal patrol to come out here and just pick up all loose dogs. All right, Metro officers were able to capture that dog responsible for the attack.